Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody here today. Glad you came out to the Lord's house. We'll come on in and get ready. Amen. Amen. Our uh, monthly scripture is, Nay, we are more than conquerors through him that has saved us. Amen. Our Christmas play practice will be um, held on Wednesday nights for our young people. So uh, please come, be a part of that. Um, is that for the little kids as well? Okay. Um, for the little kids and the big kids. Uh, Christmas play Wednesday night. Play practice Wednesday night. Thanksgiving meal November 21st in the a.m. service. We won't have an afternoon service on a th uh, that the 21st. The p.m. service at the ball field Sunday on the 28th. So um, we'll be praying about that. We may even have it here at the church. Anybody got any, everybody okay if we just have it here outside instead of going down to the ball field? We got more of our stuff here. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll do it here. We'll just do that back. We got, we got playing room, praise the Lord. We'll set up some games and stuff. We need to have us a, a cornhole tournament. That'd be great. So um, December the 5th is the greening of the church, and the Christmas play this year is December the 15th. Looking forward to that, and um, be prayer for that. We'll also have the uh, Christmas Eve um, service for before Christmas. So if you make sure, put that on your calendar as well. A lot of times churches have them, and <coughs> we have people that come to ours that are looking for a place to go and have a Christmas Eve service. Um, you say, well, it's hard for me to find time. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you have, hey, what's up, man? Come on up here. You're doing good. You're probably worrying your people. What's up with your hand? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't want to mess you up. Go ahead. He's going to be church of God, his hands up all the time. <laughs> Amen. But listen, about, about back to the um, Christmas Eve service. If you have a hard time coming to a Christmas Eve service, uh, worshiping our Heavenly Father, you got it all backwards. I know you plan stuff, but plan now. Plan now with your family stuff. Plan afterwards. We'll do it after dark, and, and, and it's a short service. I understand. I understand people's desiring to be with their family, uh, I get that. Uh, but if you can come, please do. Make arrangements for that. Any other announcements? Any prayer requests? What was the Williams brother's first name? Sammy Williams passed away. Um, also, some of you may have known Joe Allen in Folkestone. Joe Allen passed away. Had a stroke yesterday, a heart attack or stroke passed away. Any others? Yes, sir? Wayne? Wayne Cowell. I'm going to start referring to yours as the big three. And the Mixons. Mixons. Um, Brother Randy Morrison is um, in um, Canada. He sent me some pictures about two minutes ago of a giant deer. I told him God wasn't in that. <laughs> but uh, about a foot of snow on top of his truck. So I'm glad it's him and not me. But uh, keep him in your prayers. I think he's coming back home tomorrow. So keep him in your prayers as he travels. Uh, remember Coach Carter. He's in Guam with his wife. Um, there, her aunt is, um, I think, on her deathbed. I'm not sure. I know that there's a lot of a lot of problems there, and they called all her family in. A, they're real close, so they're they're there with them now. So y'all keep keep Coach Carter, Miss Vicky, in your prayers. Any others? Remember uh, my aunt Boogie, Miss Mary Sue Wheeler. Um, um, She's, she's on her last days. Um, she's lived a long time. I tell her all the time. She, t she always tells us she's going to outlive all of us. Well, I won't doubt it. Look, look to me like. But uh, pray for Aunt Boogie. She's uh, um, run a long race. Keep her in your prayers and keep her children in your prayers and grandkids and greats and 
But I keep her in your prayers as, as these days are closing. She was right down the road from me. And some of that old school, those old folks, we get to be the old people. Brother Rick, I'm getting to be the old people now, man. I, so, uh, any others? Any other? Amen. Remember of Terry's mom. Brother, I have That's a blessing. They took out a huge piece in our shoulder of melanoma, and they were worried. And I think at one time they had said that it was in her lymph nodes, and they were worried about that. So they went and checked again. Then it then it, then it wasn't. So yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Joe's preached here um, a couple of years ago for me. Uh, he's the youth guy over at Camp Pickney Baptist Church. Y'all know Brother Joey, Miss Michelle. Any others? Any others? Any unspoken? Amen. Good to see all of you praying for each other and have unspoken. And just pray God meets all your needs. All your needs. It's Christmas time. So pray God meets your needs and pray as we get ready for this upcoming season. Thanksgiving is coming up. Pray for our, our soldiers who are away from home. Some of you have been there. Thank you for your service. Some of you have been there and you know what it's like to be home, away from home on holidays. And uh, we look forward to getting with family on Thanksgiving and that time in between there and Christmas, getting ready for Christmas. So uh, pray for all those that are away from home. Pray for Israel uh, this time of year with all the stuff going on in this world. Uh, pray uh, that, that, that the Lord will see fit in some point in the future to come and get us. But while we're here, let's try to win a few souls. Try to win a few souls. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time together, for the goodness you've shown us this week, God, and for the forgiveness that you so freely um, sent in our direction. Thank you, God, so much that you've reached down from heaven and saved lost sinners, God, that you still do. And you tell us that if we accept you as our Savior, God, you'll take us to be with you. So, God, I pray that today will be a day of awakening in somebody's life, God, as we, as we pray and consider the life of David and the issues he had. God, I just pray you'll, you'll bless us as we study and try to apply what we study to you. God, I thank you that as we enter into worship for the folks that are leading, pray, God, you'll continually be beside them and give them strength to do what you call them to do for the sick and sin sick in our community. God, there are so many, we hear about so many more for the deaths, the loss of loved ones that we've had the past um, week, couple of weeks, God. Pray you'll be beside them. For those that are sick, God, I pray you continue to bless them. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, that you love us and that you look our way. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you would please stand and visit around just for a moment.
guys would worship with us this morning. Eclipsed by glory, and I 
and your mercy is so strong and so powerful but the love you have for us overrides all things Lord I thank you for the way you love me thank you for the way you keep me and hold me for the way that you've prepared for me the path that was laid down so long ago by your own son that I might have a way to heaven Lord I give thanks this morning I praise you and I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for the way you love us. Father, we have so much provision. You have given us so much. Help us, Father, to give back. Help us to return to you. 
with what you've given and how you've given. Help us to share the gospel. Help us to share the truth of who you are with those who need desperately to hear it. Father, we need revival. We need a great awakening. We need an outpouring of who you are in and through us. Father, we give thanks for the opportunity now to give, to, re to return back to you as you've given us. And we thank you for the time of offering. As you have offered, Lord, I pray that we would offer up as well. We give thanks this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Angela, Miss Hosanna, appreciate y'all. Amen. Take your Bibles with me. Turn to Psalms 51. Kids are ready to blast off. Good luck. Amen. There's a pile of them going back there. Um, keep them in your prayers. Keep our workers in your prayers. And thank the Lord for our people here at church that do work and help. And um, We have very few staff people. So if, if, uh, if you look around, everybody's volunteering. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have help and to, to see God at work in and around our church and the people that are filling people's places when they're not here. It's a blessing. Take your Bible, Psalms chapter 51 and verse 10. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word, if you will. Psalms 51, verse 10. The Bible says in Psalms 51, 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, we love you and thank you for your word. And God, as we stand today to preach it, God, I pray that it goes with power and, and presence, Lord, that I can't do. I pray, God, that as the word goes out, Lord, it, it won't return void. I pray that your word, Lord, touches somebody's heart today. It's my prayer that, God, if there's somebody here today that has, has struggled or, or has in the past or, Lord, can remember these days, God, they'll find some joy in this scripture as I have. Lord, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> if you would be seated. Um, during his lifetime, King David, the Bible says, did a lot that pleased the Lord, the Bible said. The Bible said he did a lot that pleased the Lord. But in 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 5, he says that David did a lot to please the Lord, except the issue with Bathsheba and Uriah. So he did a lot that pleased the Lord, but that always followed him, that always hounded him. That, it was always that sin, always that thing that he struggled with, that, that, was, that, was, that was part of his um, um, makeup, that was part of his testimony, if you will. It was always that thing. And, and I want you to understand something. When something happens in a person's life, they can, they can uh, let it destroy them or they can move on. Listen, you can, you can allow failures to be fatal if you want to. You can allow things, uh, whenever you drop the ball or things don't happen exactly like it should, you can allow those things to eat you from the inside out and you are never any good to God. Or you can do as David did, and that's what we're going to do this morning. I'm going I'm to take you through three steps and show you what David did to get his joy back. And there's a lot of people today who sit in our churches joyless. No more joy. They just come do the work. 
They just come. Somehow or another, they think that if I'll come do the work, if I get enough work done, then somewhere there'll be some happiness because they know somewhere down the road this all got to pay off. So they just do this work. Listen, God intended us to have joy along the way. God intended for us that as we go and as we are Christians and as we walk this earth, that there should be some joy. I got news for you. There are times that it's tough. Listen, there's some times that it's just not very joyful. Listen, I see people that are, that are Christians that go through tough days with sickness and, and death and, and, and poverty and different things in people's lives that seem to plague. But the bottom line is, when it's all said and done, joy doesn't have any grip on finances and joy doesn't have any grip on health reasons and joy doesn't have, a, have any issues with other problems. Joy is something that comes from within. Joy is not, not being happy with the state that you're in or the place you're in or, or, or what you have. Joy is something that literally comes from your bones when you look towards your Creator and you realize that He's looking your way and He's satisfied with you. It brings me great peace and joy to know God looks my way. Is He satisfied? I don't know. I hope so. I just work all the time to see if, he, see if, I, see if I can, you know. I don't work because I am, uh, to be saved. I work because I, I am saved. And, and I want when God looks my way, he sees his servant, his, his child doing what he was called to do when he was called to do it. And, and, and those two things are very, uh, uh, has a lot more to do with our life and our obedience and our joyfulness than we realize <clears throat> being what we're called to be when we're called to be it. So David you know, did a lot for the Lord um, throughout his life. We see as a young, as a young man was anointed king. And, um, but we have here in chapter 51 of Psalms his confession. And really he had to come to a place where he realized that he dropped the ball. He was a knucklehead. And he did things he shouldn't do. And now here's where he's at. And you know why he wanted to restore, restore the joy of his salvation? You know why he wanted that? Because he'd had the joy of his salvation. He knew what it was like to be right with God. He knew what it was like to, to stand under the, under the fountain, under the spout where the glory comes out, if you will. He knew what it was like to have God look his way and be proud and, and, and to walk the, the green pastures with the sunlight on his face. He knew what that was like. And he'd been without it for about a year. Psalms 51, he'd been about a year where he wasn't... And listen... This is a big, murder and adultery is what got him to this place of confession. But I can assure you it don't have to be that momentous that'll take your joy, that'll take you away from the things of God. Generally, it has less to do with other people and more to do with dissatisfaction or things we've allowed in our own lives. It comes to a place where we have to take a good look at our own selves and retrospect, see where we've been and what we've done and you know, we can, we can choose to or not. It's just completely up to us. Um, I'm going to read a verse here. Let's, let's take off in verse 1, probably read most of this chapter. But um, he asked the first thing for three, three quick reasons. A prayer, he has a prayer here with three requests. Three requests. The first request is, Lord, cleanse me. Lord, cleanse me. Throughout your, as a Christian, throughout your life, this is going to be something that should be very prominent in your list of wants is to have a cleansing, to be cleansed, to be, have your sins forgiven. It shouldn't be something that you do once every few years. A cleansing ought to happen regularly. Hey, listen, there ought to be times where you ask forgiveness of your sins every day. Every time I pray during the day, I ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins. Why is that, Brother Ray? Because from the last time I prayed to that time, I've sinned. And I need to ask God to forgive me of my sins, that I, I regularly sin. I, just dumb stuff. I get aggravated in the truck. I'm in there by myself. People that don't drive right make me aggravated. And I'll be going, yeah. I, and, 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 and sometimes, and sometimes I'm, I'm on Facebook or I'm watching something and, and somebody sends me something political. Somebody, listen, a lady come around the corner last night wearing a T-shirt that offended me. You said that offended you? Well, the politics behind it did. And I, I'm just weary of it. And you just get weary. So listen, it don't take me long to, to get aggravated about something. Am I the only one? I mean, it don't take me long to get just like, oh. 
And before you know it, listen, before you know it, I've sinned. You say, well, bro, how's that sin? Because I don't let God be in charge of my thoughts. I don't let God be in charge of how I view things. You know, I've told you before in an in a, uh, uh, illustration that when I was lost, I used to could ride by the bar there at the state line, never Never bothered me, never had any issues. But once I, right after I got saved, I could ride by that bar and I looked at there and, I, and just distaste at the people standing out there in front of that bar. But then God broke my heart. And he said, that's who you were. I didn't drink, but I was lost. That's who you were. So be very careful about what you decide to frown at and turn your nose up and think you're better than. Because that's just lost people. That's just how you were. It took a little bit of growth. It took a little bit of maturity to realize, well, that was me. So I'm just hating. I'm just hating on a, 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 a pre-me. <laughs> I'm just hating on something that, that needed maturity, that needed Jesus. How in the world can I show a world Jesus if I'm disgusted at everything I see? Listen, I tell you, we as Christians, we're called to something better. We're called to something better. We, we have you noticed? It seems like the service wherever you go out and eat now has gone down. Have I noticed that? It seems like the service at the places where you go and buy your products has gone down. Have you have you noticed that? It, it seems like everything is degrading. Everything is going down, and everything is diminishing. So, what should we do about it? What what, what should we do about it? See, we're called to be Christians in a world where they don't... See, we're, we're good Christians when everything satisfies us. But what, what happens when it don't satisfy you? David, in this instance, he could have done anything. Listen, he was the king. He was the king. He could have brought sacrifices and had them slaughtered and made a big public show. But he knew that his one obligation wasn't to be right with the kingdom of Israel or Judah. That his obligation was to be right with his creator. Amen. It wasn't to be right with the people that saw him. It was to be right with the God who knew him. And that's where we fail sometimes. We're good at making the outside clean. We're good at making the outside shiny. But boy, the inside. That's what David prayed. Let, let, let's read a few verses. He said, he said very first of all, in the first part of his prayer, he said, Lord, cleanse me. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. These first four verses, he took responsibility for his sin. What sin, Brother Ray? The sin with Bathsheba. Some of you may not, may not know or you may not recall. Um, in, in chapter, oh, I think it's in 2 Samuel. I got her marked here. 2 Samuel, um, I'm still looking for it. 2 Samuel chapter 12. So read verse 11, um, David and Bathsheba. David sees um, Bathsheba um, washing. And he's in a temple. And in his, in his palace, he's able to look down and he sees her. And he, he goes and has her brought to his chambers and he lays with her. And she sends word that she's going have to a, have a child. Now, her husband is Uriah, a faithful servant who's in the military and a leader of men, so he has brought, he, uh, he's out fighting a war right now where that David should have been fighting himself. Listen, it, it, leaders, if, if you won't go, don't send people. You know, David should have been out there with him. But that's, that's a good thing for us uh, to always remember. If, if, we, if we won't do it ourselves, don't ask somebody else to. Anyway, so as David, as David uh, recognized his sin and the trouble that he was in, he, he realized that he had to cover this thing up. Isn't that way it is with sin? Very first time we start to mess up, first thing we want to do is see if we can't cover it up. We mess up, we want to cover up. But you got to realize God is, is in the undercover business. Amen? He, he'll, he'll find out what you're up to. The Bible says to be sure your sins will find you out. Amen. Now, David was able to hide this sin for about a year. The Bible says here that... that, um, that uh, Uriah was called home and then was, was some meat and all was sent ahead of him to his house for him to go and, and be with his wife and to lay with his wife, but he wouldn't do it. He was a good, honest servant, good, honest man. He said, I can't do that. My superiors are out in the field sleeping in tents. 
I can't go sleep in my house, brother. So he slept with the servants. Next night, he, uh, David got Uriah drunk. And, 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 and instead of Uriah going home, like most everybody else would have staggered to the house, he slept there with the servants in the palace and got ready to go. David realized he couldn't fix that problem, that, that he couldn't send Uriah to his house and at least claim that that's Uriah's child. See, it, would never, would have, it never would have worked. It never would have worked. So he, he, he had Uriah sent back out to war, and he told Joab, sent a messenger to Joab, and said, listen, here's what you need to do. I want you to send Uriah out into the heat of battle. When it's the hottest place, wherever it is, you send Uriah. I want him dead. I want him to die. Well, that's exactly what happened. Servant came back and told David, said, listen, uh, we went close to the walls, uh, the city fell, people th could throw things down, and Uriah died there. David said, well, people die. It's not a big deal. People die. See, it took a, a lot of people had to die for his scheme to work, but it still wasn't going to work. All he was doing was fixing things in the eyes of other people. All he was doing was fixing things in the eyes of other people. There's a few people that knew about it. First of all, Bathsheba knew. And secondly, one that he trusted for years, Joab, he knew. He knew. A little later on, in, in, a, in a second battle they're going into, he said, you better come on out here. They're going to start chanting my name instead of yours. He had to go back and be the king. But here we find David in 2 Samuel. We, we find him, we find him uh, uh, everything's out of sorts. And for nine months he tries to hide. Bathsheba goes through her time of mourning. And her time of when her husband Uriah was killed, she went through a, a, the regular mourning period. And when that was over, David sent and brought her to his house and married her. Wound up having children. But not this child. For a month, for, I mean, for a year, he tried to hide his sin. But you can be sure your sins will find you out. The Bible says in chapter 12 that Nathan confronted Daniel. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, David. David had a son named Nathaniel, but it wasn't this prophet. Nathan. I've heard, I've had people argue about that. Um, this prophet, his daddy was named Atai. So this wasn't David's daddy. I mean, David's son, Nathaniel, uh, Nathan. So Nathan came and, and told the story. He said, Lord, he said, uh, sent Nathan to David. And he came unto him. He said, the rich man hath exceeding many flocks in the herds. He said, there were two men in, in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb which he had bought and nourished up and grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Man, they, that, that pet, that, that lamb was a pet. Listen, it gives us kind of the idea of what has to be sacrificed when our sins need to be forgiven. You know, they bring that thing to the house so it, so, so it don't get a mark, so it don't get a blemish. They make sure it's taken care of. But when it comes time for it to be sacrificed, there's a loss. They realized that lamb had to die for their sins. So here this man has one little ewe lamb. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and, and he spared to take of his own flock, of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that, that was come unto him. But he took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Isn't it funny how we can see the sin in somebody else's life so quickly? And he said unto Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall receive the lamb, he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he had done this thing, because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives in thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. And it they had been... To, and, 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 it, and if they had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil in thy sight? So it was all found out. Listen, be sure your sins will find you out. Be sure to, the things in your life will happen. So this is what all brought David to this point. For the whole term of her pregnancy, this was the place where she had the child uh, sick, the baby was, the child was sick and, and, and when these things began to happen here we have in, in 2 Samuel I want to make sure I get that right that, the, that the, uh, the, when the child dies in verse 15 um, David arose from the earth in verse 20 and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel, came to the house of the Lord and worshipped, then came to his own house and when he required and when he required, they fed him there 
But David had went through some tough days of his own doing. David was going through things of monsters that he would not only built, but he would brought to life. And those things now were roaming around. He had to deal with it. Listen, if he was ever going to be close to God again, he had to deal with it. Hey, I tell you today, Christian, your desire ought to be to be close to God. You say you're a Christian, prove it. Prove it to God. Don't prove it to me. Show God, show God that He is who He says He is. That, that you want Him to cleanse you and, and blot out your transgressions. You say, brother, I hadn't, I hadn't sinned that much. Listen, you stack up a whole little bit of something and it becomes it gives me something. What dirt is to the body, sin is to the inner man. What dirt is to the outside, sin is to the inside. It'll, it'll begin to uh, tear up everything around it. By committing adultery and murder, he'd crossed over the line God had drawn in his law. He had missed the mark God had set for him with his sin. He had yielded to his twisted and sinful nature, his iniquity. All these things had happened in David's life, so here he was. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Have you ever been in that place in your life? Well, he said, Lord, forgive me. Lord I, I did, Lord, I did it. I did it. I did it. Where are you at with the Lord today? Well, where's everybody in here at your walk with Christ now? Uh, could it be that you're where you are because you did it? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Listen, I thank God that when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, He blotted out my transgressions. He blotted out my sin. It was washed away. Listen, I, there's nothing between me and God that Jesus can't fix. Amen? Y'all right? This ain't nothing between me and God that my advocate won't stand up for because I belong to Jesus. Listen, we have to remember what we're entitled to as blood-washed, born-again children of the King. Hey, we sit in here and we come in every Sunday morning. If you're not careful, we'll get to be the same as last Sunday, the same as the Sunday before. You got to come wanting something. Listen, you got to come desiring to be close to your Creator. You got to, we have to have a desire. And Lord, help us with our desires. He goes on to say, Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from what? From my sin. Not Bathsheba's sins, not Uriah's sins, not Joab's, from my sin. He said, I did it. First thing that happens in the life of a believer to be cleansed is they're truthful with themselves. They have to be very truthful. They have to look at itself in the mirror and really see what's in there. They, you know, I can't look in the mirror and see a big, tall, skinny guy. I have to look in that mirror and see what's really in there. I, 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 can't, I can't see myself uh, out fishing in a, in a $100,000 bass boat and, and being a big fisherman because I just don't fish that good, you know? It'd be one thing to have it, but something else to have to try to catch fish in it. If you can't catch fish in a John boat, don't go buy a big boat. The boat don't make the fisherman. You all right? It's the same way as a Christian. Listen, you drop the ball. Listen, you, you have to come to church and ask God to intercede and get involved with you because you need help. More than ever, we need help. We need our Creator to look our way and to say, Listen, I know you dropped off, but I'm proud of you. I appreciate you. Coming and asking forgiveness. One of the things that we as people ought to do is not be afraid of Jesus. Not be afraid to ask God to forgive us. Listen, to come in, in full knowledge of knowing that God looked our way and saw exactly what we did when we did it. You're not hiding anything. David knew that he wouldn't hide anything. Watch this. He said, and again, he said, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. His sin had gotten so heavy, he couldn't, he couldn't do nothing else. Anybody like that today? You ever been like that in your life where your sin had got so heavy? Your transgressions, this is save people now. Where your transgression had got so heavy, where you're walking away from God had got so heavy that it doesn't seem like anything you did worked anymore? Hey, could it be that you've lost the joy of your salvation? Could it be that you've, you've, you've banked up so much against the things of God that you've got to get some forgiveness? If I've been there. Boy, I've been there. Look here. Verse 4 says, Against thee only have I sinned. Against thee only have I sinned. He didn't try to blame it on anybody else. He didn't blame it on Bathsheba. But he realized his greatest responsibility, though, was to be right with God. Can I beg you to recognize that this morning? That your greatest responsibility ought to be 
to be right with God. Above all else, above, above me, above the church, above your class, above your stuff, above your wife, your children. It's to be right with God. You know, in this world that we're living in today, it wants us to not see what reality really is. We're living in a world where they want us to see an alternative to everything. You know, there's an alternative to marriage. You can marry a man. Well, the Bible still calls that an abomination. Amen. Listen, I, I can't help it if that offends you, but that's just the truth in Scripture. We, 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 we line up all these things and we, we say all these things about God, but the reality of it is, is when we sin against God, we sin against God. We talked about that Wednesday night about being accountable. John Lee sent me a picture of a Whopper hamburger. He said, it's not my fault. Sent me a picture of a Whopper hamburger. Said it wasn't his fault. Listen, it is his fault. And it's the same way when we sin. It's our fault. And listen, we can't blame God for what we've dropped the ball in doing. David was so broken. Have you ever been broken over your sin? In this, in this alternate reality world, the world would tell you that it's not your fault that you sinned. The world, you know, I, I was watching on the, uh, I'll say this again because only about a handful of y'all was here to hear it Wednesday night, so I might as well say it again, amen. Are y'all right? I didn't hurt your feelings, did I? So I was watching on, looking on Facebook or something the other day, and a little, little thing scrolled by, and it's at a, it, it, it talked about weight loss. And the first thing it says, it's not your fault. And I went, that's what I'm preaching on. That's what I'm preaching. So I clicked on it. Don't ever do that. Man, I got more weight loss stuff coming through my Facebook and email. They call them a phone. I was crazy. Stuff. Anyway, I looked at it, and they said, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And, and psychologists would that today would tell you that when you go in and talk to them, that, that, that you didn't do it, that something happened to you when you was a child, you're just, you're just a product of that. And, and the world would like to tell you, listen, I got news for you, not just the world, but preachers would like to tell you that your sin is not your fault. It is. If you choose to sin, it's your fault. You say, Brother Ray, well, I, I, I struggle with temptation. Well, we like to call it a disease now when we sin. We like to call it well, something that we can't quite control anymore. Listen, it's you. Can I tell you, you might struggle with that for the rest of your life. I'm thankful that I don't have to be perfect to go to heaven. Hear me here. I'm thankful I don't have to be perfect to go to heaven. There may be some things you struggle with the rest of your life. But it's still yours. Listen, you may struggle with alcohol or, or, or whatever. What you, name yours. You may struggle the rest of your life. Why do you think Jesus told us in, in 1 John 1, 9? Why do you think he left us that verse that if we confess our sins, that if we grab a hold of our transgression and realize that that's ours, not somebody else's ours, that he'll forgive us. Amen. And listen, I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to try hard. I was, I was talking to a man this past week and he was struggling with sin. I said, when's, when's, I said, when's the last time you prayed? He said, a long time. I said, Mr. Armstrong, I'm going to tell you something. I said, you have to get up every single day and pray for the sins that you committed while you were sleeping. He said, he said, is that particular? I said, yeah. I said, end of the day, pray. I said, during the middle of the day, man, if you got five minutes and you realize you, I said, man, stop. God hears you. God hears you. He, God wants to hear from you. When, when we get spiritually sick, he wants to know. Man, I was sick as a dog this morning. I don't feel good now. But I knew. I knew God would show up. Listen, I knew God would meet me here. Listen, I knew without a doubt if I get back here behind this whole list, he'd meet me here. So if I beg and ask, he'll show up. There's been times in my life where I've had to ask God forgiveness of sin. I say times. <laughs> All the time, I have to ask forgiveness. Of sin. And every single time he's met me there, Every single time I've been forgiven of sin. Amen. Y'all right? Amen. Let, me, let, me, let me finish up. I, I, I got two more requests. I'll finish tonight if you come back. But I'm going to finish right here. I'm going to draw this to a close. So you, you be praying. Now, 
Paul quoted in verse 4 in Romans chapter 3 as part of his argument that the whole world is guilty before God. Listen, he said that the whole world is guilty before God. He said, let God be true and every man a liar. God's true, but every man's not. Every, every single man on this face, and woman, by the way, and women, but every single one of us left to our own demise would be far away from God given the chance. Listen, if it wasn't for Jesus, listen, you ought to thank God for the Holy Spirit nagging on you. Listen, that's the sign that you are saved. You ought to be thanking God that the Holy Spirit's going... You're a knucklehead. What are you doing, man? Listen, if I, ever, if I ever start to wander on God, if I ever start to move away from things of God, the Holy Spirit said, there you go again. I can't believe you. Amen. I can't believe you. I've already forgiven you that one time. You're going to do it again. I'm going to have to... Really? You know what? He meets me there. And then the next time, I do my best. Ah. Uh, is that, is that you? Is that you? David said, cleanse me. His desire was to be right. What's your desire? Is it to be for the issues to go away? Is it to be for people to look at you and be proud of you again? Is it for people to look your way and say, you know, that old boy's a worker. He drops a ball every now and then. What's your desire? Let me finish this. The Bible says in Psalms 63. Oh God. This was David. He said, Oh God, thou art thou art my God. Have you been to this place in your life? Away from all the noise, all the all the people and all the music, all the stuff. It's you and God. Have you been to this place? Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Is that your desire? To be right? To be so close to God that when we come, that we can enter into it like, listen, you know why I like to worship? You know why I like to worship? Because I've worshipped. Well, I know what it's like. And I know what it's like when I don't. You, you, know, you know why I like to be in God's Word and I like for God, to, the Holy Spirit, to show up here in our services? You know why? Because I've seen the Holy Spirit show up in these services. I've, I've, I've yearned for the things of God. And, and i got to be honest with you, I don't want anything less. I don't want anything less. I don't want it to be average. I don't want to be average. You can go anywhere and sit in a service and, 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 and it'd be dark and hear a loud band and loud this and loud that and come in and stand around for 45 minutes and not know anybody and go back home. No. I want to worship. I want to come to a place where the, the folks I meet, we're all on one page. We're all on the same way. Listen, we're praying. We're seeking after God. We may not always agree. We may get aggravated one another and bad. I'm just not. But we love each other. So I want to be at a place where we come worship. Is I want to be at a place where we yearn for God and long for the things of God. Do you? If you do, you can't have. You, you can't have. Where are you? You know, brother, there you go again, brother. Ray. Listen, you can have. You can have. David's heart was broken. Maybe yours needs to be. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for meeting me here, God. And thank you for your word. Lord, all week I had no idea what to preach. God, as I studied and I heard great preaching the first of the week, Lord, I've been around and prayed and studied and prayed and studied. And God, thank you for reminding me that this morning, above all else, somebody may need to be refreshed. Somebody may need the tools, Lord, to ask for cleansing. You tell us that if we'll simply ask and believe, Lord, you'll forgive us. So God, I pray that today there's a Christian here, Lord, who's trying to find some peace and some joy again. 
God, I pray you let me live long enough through the night where I can finish this sermon and preach the other two prayers that he had. And God, I pray that if that person's here who may not be saved today, needs to be, I pray they come. They have no idea what I'm talking about, about worship and my bones even yearning for the things of God. Lord, give us that desire again. Lord, give us a desire to, to, to want to be in your presence regularly. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, please stand. If you'd like to come, please do. There's a moment. There's a moment in time you could just stop and say, Lord, I just, I just, I just want to touch. I just want to touch from you. God, I just want to recognize you in all your pureness and your majesty just for a moment. Are you here today and lost? The Bible tells us very clearly that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will not go to heaven. There's no alternative reality for hell. It is a literal burning place. And if you're here today without Jesus, that will be your final stop forever. It's up to you. Jesus hung and died on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago so that you'd have a way and you'd have somebody that would be able to forgive you of your sins right on. Well, I'm thankful for that. Listen, I'm in. The Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. I'm in. I'm in. But listen, I can lose that joy. Lord, forgive us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to search and long after you. I like looking for things. I was telling my wife yesterday, it was cleaning out our barn, and every little thing I handled, I looked at, and I could remember when I got old stuff, you know, old rusty stuff. She went over to a hope chest that my daddy built her before we got married, and opened up the old mag, old uh, uh, picture albums and stuff in there, and different things, and you know, we like to go back and remember. But let me tell you what I remember when I stood there looking over my daughter's shoulder, my wife's shoulder. I remember all the young people that we led to Jesus. I remember I looked in that picture. That's when I was lost. That's the picture of when I was lost. And I looked a little further in that book. Like a whole different person. You know what my daughter said? She didn't know I picked up one. She said, Daddy, you look different in that picture. She said, you look married. That's what she said. You know what she saw? Peace. Joy. I was on the inside. I was on the inside. She got to see joy. Thank God that's all she's ever seen from her daddy is this side. Thank God for that. This morning, it's very important for you to yearn after the things of God. To yearn. Can't nobody make you thirsty. You have to produce that through your own activity. That's something you have to do. I can't do it for you. That's yours. That's yours. Praise the Lord. Glad you came today and um, look forward to tonight. Got, got three more weeks worth of preaching to do up there. But I look forward to being with you tonight. Anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? Brother Howe, would you dismiss us, please?